All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Nina Cook, who is all the way over in the UK, just outside London. How are you doing, Nina? I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Nina's a mindset coach for entrepreneurs. She helps entrepreneurs break through limiting beliefs to achieve their business goals, to create more impact and above all, make more money. And what we're going to talk about today is how to get over the fear of sales calls. And let's face it, I mean, especially there's a lot of people who, uh, and entrepreneurs, as you know, maybe go into something because they're passionate about what it is the product or service they're doing, but they don't necessarily see themselves as a salesperson. Uh, and then there's a lot of salespeople who default into the sales job as their first job out of college. And sometimes it ends up being a, a reluctant career, but sometimes never get over that, that fear or trepidation of making calls. Yeah, it's, it's so true because we, when we start our business, we're the experts in that particular service and delivering that service. And suddenly we have, we have to become a sales expert, a marketing expert, a tech expert, and it can take up so much time trying to learn this stuff when really all we want to do is deliver the service that we want to deliver. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So how do you start to help people uh, get over this fear of, of sales calls? Because I mean, we're, we're fantastic about sometimes convincing ourselves negatively. Like we go in expecting, expecting a negative reaction or not even expecting to maybe get somebody on the phone. And sometimes even when you get somebody on the phone, it's like a shock and it's like, it's even worse then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And this is a big area because as you and I know, without having sales conversations and regularly, we're not going to get clients, especially high paying clients. So this is an area that I absolutely love to help my clients with. So if, say a client comes to me and says that they hate having sales conversations. So what I'd like to do with clients, I like to look at the challenge and then we go a step deeper and I'll ask them, what pattern of behavior would you like to dissolve? What pattern of behavior do you keep repeating that you no longer want that isn't serving you? So, for example, around sales conversations, it may be that they avoid them. So avoidance is a big pattern of behavior we tend to have as entrepreneurs. There are certain things we do, other things we always try and avoid doing. If the client has a, an avoidance of sales conversations, then I would ask that client, what emotion do you feel when you think about having a sales call? And that emotion is likely to be fear, anxiety, stress. They may have a sensation in their body. Perhaps they feel um, tight in their chest or their stomach knots up. So this is a recurring pattern that keeps happening. It's triggered by the thought of having a sales conversation. Mm -hmm. Once we establish the pattern of behavior, then I dive a level deeper with them. And this is where the gold is. So what is driving those thoughts and feelings, those negative thoughts and feelings? It's our beliefs. It's the beliefs that we hold in our subconscious. And for most people, those beliefs are hidden. They do not know why they react like this. So once you can, it's like finding the table legs of that unproductive pattern of behavior. Once you can start finding those beliefs and beliefs, they can, we can be really helpful. We can have really productive beliefs that, yeah, I can do this. I can charge this much. I have a lot of value that you know, I love talking to people. It's up to them whether they want to work with me or not. It doesn't mean anything about me. So we can have very productive beliefs and we can also have very unproductive beliefs as well around sales. So the table legs I typically find that clients have are things like, I don't offer enough value. People aren't interested in what I have. People aren't interested in listening to me. I'm too expensive. I keep attracting people who haven't got any money and so on and so forth. So as I said, this is where the gold is. Once we can get to the core root of why you're behaving in a certain way, why you're self-sabotaging, why you're not getting the results that you want, when you can dissolve the core beliefs then you get rapid and long lasting transformation. So yeah. I like to work very systematically. Once we get the pattern, we start dissolving the limiting beliefs. So I ask the clients to, once they've given me that, I just say, okay, just talk about everything that's in your head. You're in that position. You've got a sales call coming. What's going through your head? 
we write down all of their beliefs. Then I said, okay, start ranking them out of 10. We want to know which are the strongest table legs. And the eights and the nines and the tens, those are the ones I take them through my, uh, my successful process to dissolve that, um, that limiting belief. And then as you start collapsing the table legs, then the tabletop will fall. Mm. And then they'll start planting new powerful beliefs in its place. So now that sales conversations is held up by, by powerful, productive beliefs about how they do have the value, how they can charge what they want, that actually it's not their business to worry about whether the clients right. say yes or no. <laughs> their business is to stand in their value and talk about how they can help and be of service. So once we can get that pattern change into a productive pattern around sales, then the whole I idea of having a sales call transforms. But the funny yeah. thing is nothing has changed in the outer world. It's Everything changing has changed the world. within. Yeah, and it's really fascinating. And I think sometimes, uh, if you say to pe if you say to people like, "Oh, you may have you probably have limiting beliefs or whatever," you know, they'll be like, "Yeah, whatever." Um, but the point that you raised earlier, and I think this is a really incredibly important one, is the physiological reaction. Right? Is you know you can't deny that you know when you when when you have a trepidation about something as you said and you get a physical response you have a limiting belief you have a, a mindset um that's not helping you there's a physiological and uh, uh, response and that's how you can identify and it's very hard then to deny that that's where the problem lies exactly and i know when there's something that i'm resisting doing i almost have a sensation of leaning back I don't want to do it. It's almost like I stamped my foot. And I said, I'm not <laughs> going to do it. If I don't want to do it, no one's going to make me do it. And it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because we go into business and we go into business to have, well, mostly time freedom, financial freedom. We want a flexible schedule. We want to be able to spend quality time with our families. And yet we end up sabotaging our success often by doing things which work against us rather than for us. And if we didn't have all this mind clutter, if we could just make the best decision in the moment about our business, do I want to set up some sales conversations? Will they be helpful for me in my business? Obviously, the answer is yes. If we didn't have that mind clutter holding us back, then we would be booking in sales conversations. We'd be showing up knowing that we have something of value. And that's absolutely OK for the client or the prospect to say no, because all it means is, it's not a good fit for them at this moment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything about me being not good enough or being a loser or, you know, having nothing of value. It doesn't mean any of that. And so all we do all day long without realizing it is we keep making up meanings about stuff. We make up meanings about past sales conversations. I had a run off, you know, we could say, well, I've had a run of sales conversations and people keep saying no to me. That means I'm going to go into the next one and the in that that person is going to say no to me as well, because I'm just on a bad run. So whenever we drag our past into our present moment and then we spin it out to the future, then of course we're going to be going in feeling unconfident, feeling undeserving, feeling we don't have anything to offer. Our physiological state is going to be screaming at the prospect, don't hire me, I've got nothing for you. And then we get another no, and then we think, well, I knew I was right, because mm -hmm. we always want evidence that backs up our limiting beliefs about ourselves. So we are constantly working against ourselves, which is, if you look at it logically, why would we do that? It is, it is such a it is such a bizarre and and uh, and strange thing that we do. But you're correct. Is that I love what you just said. Like attach meaning, is that. Uh, you know, maybe I maybe I call you or contact you for a sales call, and maybe you're just busy. You're not. You can't talk to me today. And I immediately say, as you said, I immediately go, yeah, there you go. Doesn't want to talk to me because I've got nothing of, of value to offer. I knew this was going to be a waste of time. Exactly. I have um, a, a LinkedIn coach, and he's he he picks up the phone to people. He just has that mindset that if he sees someone interesting on LinkedIn, he'll just pick up the phone and he said, I'm just very transparent. I'll say, I was on LinkedIn. I came across your profile. I really like this about your profile. And, you know, and I just thought I'd give you a call to say hi and, you know, and go, you know, he'll just have a conversation with people. Now, the fact is just so, 
if for him picking up the phone is easier than writing an email or writing a message on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. because he has a mindset that phone calls are very productive. It's a great way to meet people, and he's not there to sell them a meeting. He just is genuinely interested in what they do, and because he has that mindset. He has so many productive sales conversations with people on LinkedIn that he doesn't know. He sets up so many meetings and he has a fabulous business built on. You could say it's cold calling. He doesn't see it's cold calling. He says it's pick up the phone and having a conversation. And he says people don't pick up the phone to each other anymore and just dial each other out of the blue. And so when someone does that, people are quite intrigued by the fact that he's phoned them. (laughs) So it's all... an an internal mindset is nothing about sales calls that are frightening nothing about them they're absolutely neutral it's all the meanings that we're making up about them which is why people ever said ah limiting beliefs we all have them sure and until we know sorry go ahead go ahead no no please carry on no i was going to say that just the point i just wanted to underline there is is getting out of our own heads and i think that's that's Part of the issue there, as you, as you said, uh, the, the person you know who loves to, to call people, he's calling people because he's curious about them. So he's out of his own head. He's curious about the other person. And I think, unfortunately, we spend a lot of time kind of trapped in our own head. So we're not even thinking about the other person when we're calling them. Yeah, that is so true. Our focus is on ourselves. Am I saying the right thing? Have I covered that bit in the script? Oh no, I have to get to the bit where I have to say my price. I feel really nervous about that. They're going to say no. They're going to bring up all these objections. Our focus is on ourselves when our focus should really be wholly on the prospect and serving that prospect and having a transformational call with that prospect, whether they book us or not. And when, you know, when you're in a conversation with someone and you're so wrapped up in what they're saying, maybe they're they're telling you a story and you're completely there with them. And you're not thinking about how you, how, whether they like you or not, or how you're coming across. That is true deep listening. And that is probably one of the biggest compliments we can give anyone to truly listen. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And I, and I, I say that, you know, people, people don't understand listening as, as well as they think. I mean, they, you know, listening is a, yeah, well, it's a, it's a physical thing, you know, that happens. But active listening and actually taking in what somebody, that's a conscious mental thing. And there's a difference between the two. I mean, I can listen to you, but not tune into anything you're saying. Um, Or I can choose to really listen and try and understand and then validate. And I think that's the other part is like, listen to the person. And then when they're finished, it's like validate and clarify what they said. Because again, that's, that's such a compliment to the other person that you actually really, really want to make sure you understood them. Yes. So there's so many great ways of building rapport with someone and showing them that you're truly interested in in what they have. And I think the other key thing about sales conversations is letting go of needing a yes. Now, I know that for some business owners, they feel that they need a yes because otherwise they won't be able to cover their costs that month. This sales call is really important. So when we attach that much pressure on ourselves that we need to get a yes, that is where it starts getting really needy and desperate. So it's, it's just being okay with the result of the sales conversation, whether it's a yes or a no. And once you can detach from the result, then you're going to be so much more relaxed and so much more interested and focused on the other person. And guess what? That's when you're more likely to get the yes. And this is a really challenging thing to do. I know this is a challenging thing to do. And this is something that I've had to learn to do. And to be okay with a no, and to know that that no is just a no about the service. It's not right mm-hmm. for them. It's maybe not the right price for them. Whatever the reason is, it's fine. But it's not a no about me. It's not a rejection of me and who I am. And one of the biggest limiting beliefs I work with with clients around sales conversations is the limiting belief rejection is scary. Mm-hmm. We do not want to be rejected in our lives. We may have felt that we were rejected by, you know, as a child, and then it continued. And we do not want to put ourselves in a place where someone can say no to us because it wounds us personally. A rejection, I, I don't even believe there is such a thing as rejection. It's just a no, this isn't right for me. And, you know, we say no to people as well when people are selling us things. It's absolutely sure. okay to say no. And to separate our service from who we are, 
I mean, no one can reject anyone in this world. And some people can say, no, that's not right for me, but that is not rejection of the person. So when we can depersonalize all of this, then again, it's so much easier to show up and be and just have a good conversation. I don't like to even say sales conversation. Mm. I just like to say to my prospects, let's have a chat. Let's see, you know, what you're looking for and see if I can, if I can help you. If I can't, no problem at all. If I can, then let's work together. So I set up the whole sales conversation more as a, a chat, a conversation. And I don't even like to have the word sales in it because I'm... <laughs> I'm not actually selling them anything. I'm just seeing whether we're a good fit to work together. Mm -hmm. And if I don't think we're a good fit to work together, then I'm not going to offer them the option of working with me. And so it works both ways. I have as much input into that conversation and into the yes and the no as my prospect does. So in that way, it feels like a very even conversation. I don't feel that they're, they're um, superior to me in the conversation that I need anything from them. I like to go into every conversation as an equal. And that's yeah. what we all are. Yeah, no, I love that you brought that up because I've actually written that down here, the, the concept of equals. And I think that's where a lot of people come undone is because they don't go into those conversations or engagements feeling that there are a business or an intellectual or whatever equal of the person that they're, and they don't even really know the other person, but they've already assumed that they're not the equal of them. And uh, and and I think that's the other part that you just mentioned there. So we, we give away so much power uh, to the point of if you say to me no I'm, I'm not interested in what you've got to offer then I take that as a rejection ruins my day maybe ruins my weekend whatever affects all those people around me I've just given away so much power to a stranger who's literally only said that they're not interested in my product or service at this moment yeah and that's a lot of mind clutter isn't it and we can the funny thing is the sales conversation may be an hour 30 minutes an hour long and yet we can replay it in our head for hours after that. We carry it in our head, even though it's finished. Now, mm -hmm. a sales conversation, any memory that we have, is not there to give us negative meanings about ourselves. It's just there for learnings. That's all. So if we can look at our past conversations, sales conversations, say, okay, I could have done that bit better. Maybe I didn't explain my service well. Maybe my pricing wasn't very clear, whatever it was. So I can look back at my sales conversations. I can say, OK, I can improve this, this and this. And then I can do my next call feeling more confident. That is the value of past sales conversations. They are not there for us to beat ourselves up and feel that we have nothing of value to offer. So it's the way that we look at memories, which is all wrong. We look at memories, you know, childhood memories. My parents didn't spend much time with me. That means I'm not important. I didn't deserve their love. All this stuff that we carry around, we are not looking at memories in the, in the right way. If we can look at memories and say, what learning can I take from that? That's yeah. it. And can you imagine how much lighter we would feel? How much more... Um, expansive will be that we could create a big vision about what we want in this life because we're not weighed down by stuff from the past and these are all useless stories that we carry they're big dramas we blow up in our heads but none of them are true i've worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs i've helped them to dissolve thousands of limiting beliefs every single limiting belief has been a lie about that client, every single one of them. So I can say with 100% certainty, any limiting beliefs you have about yourselves, any negative thoughts you have, any negative feelings that you're carrying around, then none of them are true about you. So we just remove them, dissolve them, doesn't matter how you do, just get rid of them. And then you'll connect with the truth of how infinite and limitless you are and from that place, start making your decisions, start taking action in your business, and you will, you will be excited. You'll be excited to have that business rather than fearful about running it. Yeah, no, this is a fantastic and what a great way to end. Thank you so much, uh, Nina. All of Nina's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. I work with entrepreneurs who are stuck in their businesses. They are struggling with things like overwhelm, procrastination. We talked about avoidance behavior. 
they're struggling to raise their prices. They are they they have um, imposter syndrome. They hate being visible, so they they are um, procrastinating around marketing themselves. So these are the main challenges that I work with entrepreneurs. And as I've explained, we find the unproductive patterns of behavior of emotions. We dive deeper. We find the limiting beliefs. We dissolve them. Those old patterns collapse. And then they're able to take the action that they've been putting off taking for a long, long time. They started taking that action and they start transforming their businesses. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And I just think uh, what great takeaways today. So if, if that sounds like you, if it sounds like you're carrying this massive weight on your shoulders, well, it's probably full of limiting beliefs. And if once you extract those and extract those memories and everything, you suddenly realize that, yeah, you, you, there's not that much weight anymore. And it's it's liberating and it's uh, and it's much freer. So so thank you so much, Nina. So many great takeaways for people today. And I would encourage you go check out Nina. As I said, all the information will be below this video. So thanks again, Nina. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon.